Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning uh, everyone. So today, uh, today I'm going to give you a practical session uh, on female genital tract and uh, breast pathology. Okay, after having many lectures, especially for the female reproductive uh, system, uh, a pathology, female genital tract pathology lectures. I think you have a pathology of ovary, uterus, cervix, and atrophoblastic disease, about four or five lectures. Now today we will have a one session practical pathology on that. So I will uh, just uh, conclude what uh, the case actually uh, important for you to know their gross and the microscopic features and usually the case that i will highlight here is the case that commonly we ask during the oski or during the practical examination so i hope everyone have done your handout or quiz that i have uploaded in the e-learning and as well as the extra or additional notes that i've given to you uh, in the e-learning by that i think uh, the our process our teaching process today will be become uh, much much easier and i most uh, i welcome everyone to ask any question whether at the end of the lecture or in between the lecture and i actually uh, i prefer if you just interrupt me and ask the question all right okay um for for female reproductive pathology we have many topics under the subtopics eh? but for the practical as i told you and i always uh, did mention to you that only the certain disease that only the certain pathology that we like to ask during the practical examination meaning that you need to know their gross as well as their microscopic features all right and of course need to correlate with their uh, history uh, before we commit to the diagnosis all right so we start with the surveys for example uh, i believe that you have learned many things on surveys but at least you should know what is the cin the cervical intra uh, epithelial neoplasia or cin which is have the scene one two and three and the carcinoma involving the cervix, which is uh, depends on whether it arising from the squamous epithelium or the gland, the endocervical glands. If arising from the squamous, it becomes the squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. Or if it is arise from uh, the uh, glands, endocervical glands, so it becomes the endocervical carcinoma. All right, understand? And then for the uterus, we have um, many pathologies, but, but I just emphasize here uh, the benign, one benign, and one malignant malignancy of the uterus, eh? which is uh, commonly for the fibroid or lyomyoma, which is uh, commonly it is benign, although sometimes it may transform into the malignant so it become a lyomyosarcoma all right for the uh, endometrial for the carcinoma the most common is the endometrial carcinoma which is uh, the cancer that arising from the endometrial glands within the endo endometrial cavity all right for the ovary uh, the ovary the the most common uh, the tumor uh, is a uh, teratoma which is mainly the metacystic teratoma or the benign teratoma and sometimes we may have the malignant teratoma okay but it is rare okay and then for we we have the uh, uh, cystic lesion of the ovary, ovary which is depends on the type of the cells that line the cis whether it is mucinous cyst adenoma or adenocarcinoma or serous cyst adenoma or adenocarcinoma. Serous cyst adenoma or serous cyst adenocarcinoma. Depends whether benign or malignant. All right. And then the, the 
the tumor that that related to the pregnancy uh, we have the high DTD for mole or molar pregnancy whether whether incomplete or whether it's a partial or complete all right and then we have a topic pregnancy and we have another type of the cancer like choreo carcinoma okay but it's quite rare and difficult and for, for the breast, although I have given you a lecture on many types of uh, breast pathology, but the most common is the uh, benign breast lesion, which is a uh, fibroadenoma and the fibrocystic change. And for the malignancy, it is whether it is in situ or invasive. If it is uh, in situ, it is ductal carcinoma in situ. And if, if it is invasive, it is invasive carcinoma of no special type or or NOS or NST, all right? And then we have a few other type of the malignancy of the breast, but it is quite specialized like a mucinous carcinoma or tubular carcinoma, and as well as invasive lobular carcinoma, all right? So in that one slide, I just give you a conclusion on what the most important for you to emphasize in the female reproductive or uh, female genital tract pathology uh, and breast practical. So we start with the cervix, okay? The cervix, you should be familiar with this uh, image, okay? The cervix. This, whenever you found this, this is actually the normal cervix with the os here. This is the os opening here in the normal cervix. And the surrounding you can see here, it is very shining, glistening, and smooth. So this is a normal uh, cervix, all right? Um, and this, this is a cervix, the similar, but you can see it is whitey here because it, uh, this specimen has been put into the formalin, okay? And it become uh, like this. It is whitey here because this surface is covered by the squamous epithelium and squamous. Squamous actually become like a oh, very fibrous, or very firm and whitish like this. All right, in uh, in uh, when we, the specimen put in the formalin, and it is abnormal here because it has something which is a tumor that arising from the surface. Okay. So what you should do is whenever you found a tumor in gross, whether, um, of course, in exam, they give you the photograph, the, the picture like this. So, of course, you need to identify what is the organ. Usually, uh, most of the time, they may, did mention the organ in the scenario. Please, please, please make sure you write, uh, you read the scenario carefully and identify the organ from the scenario. Because you know why? There's a, some, a, a few of you, although it did mention in the scenario the organ, but they describe something else which is from different organ. They assume that it is from another organ, which is, I don't know how they miss um, the organ given in the scenario, I don't know. But make sure, other than you uh, read the short scenario, the history, make sure in your mind, set in your mind, which are the, what are the organ, okay? The lesion coming out from which organ, that one you, you should uh, uh, install in your mind before you proceed with another uh, uh, question, all right? And then, um, after you identify the organ, you need to identify the lesion. Where is actually the lesion? Is it the whitish one, the lesion? No, the lesion, okay? So please try to describe the lesion, okay? As you can see here, it is a growth. Of course, it's a growth, it's forming a growth. Or you can say it is a tumor. But tumor, what type of growth of the tumor? Okay, it is a tumor. Tumor is, 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 it's a general term indicating of something a uh, growth. Uh, growth, growth is a tumor. But uh, how to describe the tumor? Okay, meaning that we need to know the type of the growth. Okay, whether it is exophytic growth, endophytic growth, ulcerated growth. Uh, if it is exophytic, meaning that it's out poaching outside, it growing outside. Endophytic means it's growing inside. Ulcerated growth is it's a growth but forming an ulcer. All right. And then um, the size and extension of the tumor. 
of course eh? so, uh, most of the time they give you the ruler here and then so you can approximately measure the size of the tumor for example in this case it's around three centimeter in diameter you can mention that if the ruler is there and then the tip what happened to them what the tumor do to the surrounding structure of course you can see here the tumor maybe it's as you can describe the extension it extends it into the vagina for example okay and then you can also describe the color of the tumor which is a grayish color and the tumor margin of course for example in this case what as what you can see here is still well circumscribed okay you cannot see the below one here and the surface and uh, sometimes you can see the hemorrhage it is irregular or heterogeneous surface if the surface is not um it has a different morphology uh, you can see it is heterogeneous surface all right so that's how you to that's how to describe the tumor the growth many things you can describe although the mark only wanted from you only two or three points but actually you can you can describe more than that okay i hope there's no problem if i want you to just state a few points regarding uh, the description the brief description regarding the uh, tumor or any uh, many pathology uh, that from the uh, photograph given to you for example in this case uh, they give you this kind of photograph with a short uh, scenario given to the maybe a 45 year old female uh, with a with with a history of the uh, vaginal uh, um, bleeding or or uh, in, uh, what what the most common uh, features in in the squamous carcinoma of the cervix postcoital bleed for example all right so uh, they give you the history that the most common presentation for that uh, lesion okay and then of course they want you to describe uh, to describe the, the, the tumor so as i told you okay there's a tumor but what type of the growth of the tumor whether it is uh, endophytic or esophytic but in this case what you can see it's growing outside okay it growing out of the surface of this of the os here okay so you can see it is esophytic growth okay into the uh, and then uh, you can describe the the morphology i mean the surface the surface of the tumor which is it looks um irregular with some rich on the surface of the tumor and then the size you can estimate and the tumor is extend into the vagina of course outside here is vagina this is a cervix eh? okay and then outside here of course the vagina meaning that the tumor already extend into the vagina out poaching outside from the os into the vagina all right okay so it's a very simple to describe the morphology all right and then of course we'll be given the microscopy the microscopy meaning that the section the tissue section from the tumor previous tumor okay so this you need to correlate between the microscopy and the gross just now the macroscopy okay for example in this case what you should know of course this is a very uh, um, typical structure given to you everyone should know when they give you this kind of the uh, cells you should know because there is no other cell on earth that give this structure except for the squamous cells okay this is actually the keratin keratin pulse the keratin pulse this is actually a sheet or cluster of the malignant squamous epithelial cells okay that that presence of the uh, pulse of keratin at the center of the clusters okay and then you can describe the cell the cells uh, you can see here the cells are having the abundance of the plasm is polygonal in shape all right and then uh, if you can see the nucleus is some of nucleus is vesicular nucleus in under higher power you can see maybe the intracellular keratinization in between the cells and as well as the hmm, intracellular uh, bridges for example 
all that is the features of the squamous epithelial squamous carcinoma. Okay, so the diagnosis will be the squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. Why the cervix? Because the tumor is uh, coming out from the cervix. All right. Why the squamous cell carcinoma? Because the cells here indicating of the squamous cells. Why it is cancer? Because the cell here now is infiltrating the stroma. It's not like the epidermis, the normal epidermis, uh, epi normal epithelium anymore. All right? Yeah? As well as the presence of the cratipals that indicate of the abnormality of the squamous cells. All right? That is, in normal squamous, there will be no cratipals. Yeah? Cratipals indicate of the abnormal squamous formation, uh, especially in the squamous cell carcinoma. Okay? Squamous cell carcinoma, uh, when there is presence of the keratin pulse, it is indicate of the well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Yeah? For the uh, uh, poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, it's not your level because that our my our pathologist level because we cannot determine actually very difficult to determine that this is a squamous because no identifier like uh, keratin pulse, intracellular bridges, keratinization. There is no more ident identifier. Eh? As well, you know that the poorly differentiated meaning that the tumor not resembling their original tissue anymore. Okay, understand? Clear or not? Okay. Okay, if clear, I can proceed. Okay. Um, maybe um, maybe the same uh, uh, gross features just now, but they give you different the microscopic features. It's not squamous. Uh, uh, it's not squamous, but different uh, microscopy. It is uh, this this. This type of cells, they give you this type of cells, all right? Okay, oh, so you know, this is not squamous, this is not squamous cell carcinoma. Although you found the tumor growth just now, it's from the surface, as looks like the attached to the surface of the surface, or maybe it is a tumor that arising from the inner part and out poaching outside. Understand, okay. Meaning that the tumor may be arising from the endocervical gland. So when the tumor is arising from the endocervical glands, so it becomes the adenocarcinoma. All right. So how you know that this is adenocarcinoma? Of course, the microscopy tells you the tumor. This is actually the malignant tumor. How you know this is a malignant cells? You can see the cells is very hyperchromatic, meaning that very bluish and. And the, the nuclear of the cell is a bit as compared to the cytoplasm, meaning that the that NC, the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, is increasing. Yeah? The meaning that the cell is dysplastic. And the cells form in a glands. But why this is not a normal glands anymore? Of course, yeah? if you compare with the normal glands, it's a single, single glands, all right? And this is an example of the normal endocervical glands. But now the glands fuse together. Uh, it's very closely packed together in between one glands. Each gland is crowded, crowded. It's become diffused and crowded. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's closely packed together, all right? So this is, a, a, a big, uh, this is the features of the malignancy, malignant glands, all right? So what you can describe, of course, you describe that the tumor arranged in the glands, glandular formation, and the glands are crowding, okay, forming a complex pattern of glands, all right, and the glands lined by these cells, hyperchromatic, plomophic cells with an abundant metosis, here metosis, 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 all right. So how many marks you can get there? More than five marks. Yeah, of course, you can say back-to-back -back pattern, how, whatever, indicating of the crowding glands, all right? Okay, whatever word, you can use whatever word as long as you understand. Because in pathology, there are many words to describe things. I, I'm afraid that you might uh, uh, confuse with the variety of words used, all right? As long as you understand. Uh, it's okay. Uh, if you you think difficult to describe back-to-back -back pattern, you just 
Oh, what does it mean with back-to-back -back pattern? It's crowding glance. Okay, if you remember the crowding, just use the crowding. Whatever indicate uh, the same meaning. Understand? All right. Can uh, we now we uh, we move on to uh, to uh, another tumor? Uh, this tumor, this tumor not arising from from the uh, endometrial gland or endometri endocervical gland. Okay. Before that, I just want to tell you. Just now, I show you the tumor that coming out from the cervix, meaning that the tumor is surrounding here. Understand? When uh, you have the similar tumor. But now it's it's coming out from the endometrial cavity, all right. So it become endometrial carcinoma. Understand? Maybe I'm not showing you feature here, but the concept is similar. Only the location is different. Okay, understand? Maybe they gave you this uh the cut section of the uterus with the tumor that arising from the endometrial cavity. All right. So it become endometrial carcinoma. But here the tumor. Uh, given to you here is the multiple tumors that are arising from the myometrium. This is myometrium. This is endometrial cavity. Understand? You can see the tumor arising the myometrium that causing enlargement of the uterus as compared to the normal uterus here. This is a normal uterus. The endometrial cavity here is a very thin endometrial cavity. Okay? This is a myometrium. The same thing here. Uh, this is an uh, endocervical. This is endocervix and the endocervical. All right. Uh, but here, uh, the, the the there are multiple nodules. The well circumscribed nodules that that arising from the myometrium. Yeah? Some look at the at the fundus. Some deep within the myometrium to the serosa, and everywhere here. Okay, and then this uh, nodule causing the enlargement of the uterus, all right? But you can see the cut section here and here, this is the same nodule, but when it is being cut, it becomes separated. You can see here the cut surface of the nodule is, is, is homogeneous. Homogeneous means the cut surface here, similar to here, Similar to here, when you slice more, it's also similar. When you dig another slice, it's also similar. If you dig another, another slice, it's also similar features. So that uh, means a homogeneous cut surface. All right? Understand? Um, so, um, the photomicrograph, they will give you a photomicrograph that indicate of tissue section taken from the previous tumor okay um this is under low power where you can see it is just similar to previous very nice okay very nice well circumscribed tumor but under low power you can see very nice lesion and this lesion is composed of these cells okay these cells these cells is actually spindle cells. How we know that this is a spindle cells? You can see that the cells are elongated. Okay, you can see the cytoplasm of the cells is actually uh, elongated. All right. The similar things with the nucleus. Normally, the nucleus of the epithelial cells is rounded. Uh, that's why epithelial rounded with the uh, uh, around the uh, nuclei by here the nuclei is um oval and spindle manjang, okay so this is a spindle cells uh, spindle cell when, when we talk about spindle cells it indicate of the mesenchymal cells whether it is from the smooth muscles whether it is from nerve cells okay whether it is from the um uh, nerve, uh, smooth muscles, uh, fibroblasts, or uh, fibrous cells, all they are spindle cells. It's not epithelial cells. It is a mesenchymal cells. All right? The same thing here. So, it is, this, this tumor is composed of spindle cells. Okay? This spindle cells is arranged in, um, if, 
it, as what you can see here, the spindle cell looks like a formula fascicles. Eh? Fascicles. How to, what is actually fascicles? You just imagine just like a um, broom, the penyapu. Penyapu kan? Penyapu. It is actually in fascicles like that. All right. That's why sometimes we call it long sweeping fascicles. It just like macam, uh, what, how to call. But it is, this is actually in fascicles. Okay. In fascicles. It's continuous each other in spindle in, in, in some pattern. All right. So under low power, uh, you can see this is actually, it's forming a fascicles. And this fascicle interlacing each other. The smooth muscle cells. Uh, if we cut, it is in bundle. You just imagine that it is in bundle. When we cut transverse section, we can see it is in a world uh, like pattern like this. When we cut in transitional like this, longitudinal like this, it become a transverse. Uh, it become the uh, like a fascicles, long straight fascicles like that. And we found that this. The whole pet, the world pattern, and the the long fascicle it interlacing each other. All right, so that's the features of the smooth muscle bundles, and we, we try to find mitosis in all over area. There is no mitosis, so this is indicate of the benign tumor with the with evidence of the, uh, the well circumscribed lesion. There's no invasion to any other part. So this is a benign tumor, which is fibroid, the most common benign tumor of the uterus. Eh? Fibroid is a uh, dia punya uh, nickname dia. So actually dia punya pathology name is the layo mayo my layo mayo ma because it's arising from the layo mayo ma, which is smooth muscles. Okay, understand? Understand, everyone? Yes, yes doctor. Yeah. Yes, doctor. Okay, you boleh sambil minum, makan, makan. Okay, okay. As long as you are not lost. <laughs> All right. Now we move on to the yes. This this is actually the lesion that arising from this endometrial cavity. Okay, uh, I have this slide actually. Previously, I show you the lesion that arising from the endocervical here, but now. It is within the endometrial. From the gross, you can guess. Oh, of course, this this is the cancer that arising from the endometrial uh, 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 gland that forming a tumor uh, that fooling the endometrial cavity. Uh, so how to describe this tumor uh, from the gross? It looks very aggressive, right? This growth pattern, we call it fungating growth. It looks like fungating cauliflower-like growth like that. Okay. Within the endometrial cavity, you can see here, there's a blackish area indicating of hemorrhage. Okay. you can. This is hemorrhagic area. And you can see the surface of the uh, tumor here is very irregular in some uh, ulcerative. All right. And the tumor... Uh, as long as uh, we can see the tumor well, so it's no invasion to the cervix or to the surrounding structure. It's just confined to the um, endometrial cavity. You can mention everything that you see during the uh, grass examination. All right. All that um, you, uh, mark given to you. Okay. No worries. And then, of course, they will give, a, they will give you the microscopy or photo micrograph that that showing the microscopy image uh, from the tumor okay but you can what you can see here huh? of course mm, you not as compared to the normal endometrial glands which is very nice you have learned it in your histology in anatomy the well spaced gland within the stroma okay but now it changed it's no more well space gland anymore, but the gland still for at the gland. The cells, the malignant, the cells still forming. Some of it still forming glands, but the glands now become irregular, crowding, back to back pattern. All right, it's not well space gland anymore, and 
the glands now line by this type of cells which is the cells and even though with this power the cell looks very hypochromatic, very dark blue, and very uh, plomorphic, some uh, very size and shape of the cells. Even under this power, you can recognize there are many metaphoses here. It's very cellular, very crowded here. Okay, so this is indicating of the endometrial carcinoma. So you can you can calibrate the history, the gross findings, and the microscopy, and then then you can uh, give you uh, the the definite diagnosis confidently that this is endometrial carcinoma. You can just interrupt me if you have any uh, question because I'm not able to read fully your message. I get the notification of the message, but only the the first uh, two, three words all right okay can can uh, you uh, excuse me, doctor all right okay can uh good morning doctor i'm kabilan morning. here okay kabilan uh doctor just i have wanted to clarify regarding the gross mm. here we have already known that there is a fungating growth within the mm. endometrial cavity mm. and at the third point uh i can i uh, read that the mass has an irregular surface Doctor has mm -hmm. mentioned that uh, mm -hmm. in the third point. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, I was just wondering that fungating growth itself, we already know that uh, the surface is not uh, regular, uh, how to say, smooth. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. an irregular surface. So, uh, mm -hmm. this third point will be considered as a new mark or it's just the same mm -hmm. point, which if we you can think, say in a different if, way. Okay, if you think that the, your, your second point will be the repeating of the first point if you think that the, that brings the same meaning with the uh, with the first point i would like to re suggest you here to add another point for example you want to say that the surface is irregular you might you should uh, write another point like a uh, ulcerated and hemorrhagic for example so i am afraid that the second point is a repeating point at the first point so that you will lose you lost mark there okay understand sure, doctor. So, the one who uh, mark you is not only me but there will be another pathologist who mark for you it depends on the uh, pathologist that they want to give you mark or not okay better you add another point if, sure, if you think that that there's similar meaning Okay. So, can I write yeah. in this way? So, there is a mm -hmm. fungating growth within the endometrial cavity with yes. irregular surface. Yeah, 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 that's okay. Okay, doctor. We will consider. All right. Thanks okay. a lot, doctor. Okay, welcome. All right. Um, now, we move on to the next organ, which is ovary. Okay. I will sh I'm showing you here the most common uh, benign lesion in the ovary. Okay, of course, uh, if uh, you suddenly the cut the uh, lesion, the cystic lesion of the ovary, ovary um, uh, normally uh, the lesion from the ovary is a cystic lesion. Okay, cystic lesion, the cystic lesion that for uh, meaning that is a forming a cyst and uh, it's a capsule with a cyst. Uh, it's a with the fluid uh, inside the capsule. Uh? for example, in this case. This is a cystic lesion. How do how do we know that this is a cystic lesion? You can see here. This is a capsule. Okay, uh, the the capsule, and of course you see here the hair, the tooth here, the cartilage, the cheesy material. But uh, there are still space here. This space will be a uh, will compose of the something which is usually the cheesy material or the fluid or whatever the mucoid material inside all right if it is solid it just like the previous tumor it is solid nothing inside okay this is very solid nothing inside okay but if you have the capsulated like this it is a cystic lesion but in this cystic lesion it contains of the cheesy material you just mention whatever you found there a tuft of hair the teeth or sometimes you can see the bone the cartilage all right and then compare whatever the features you found in the gross with the microscopy and they give you for example like this okay 
but you should be able to add the to to recognize the structure for example this structure is a cartilage tissue you should know that this is the cartilage tissue and you should know that this is the keratin flakes this is the squamous epithelium and this is the keratin flakes actually this keratin flakes which is accumulate so many uh, inside there that producing the cheesy material the cheesy like material is actually the keratin flakes the keratin actually forming by the squamous uh, layer squamous epi 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 epidermis that form in the keratin and later on this keratin be accumulate become a cheesy material all right so when you, when you have all this structure so you can give a diagnosis of the mature cystic teratoma why mature because there is no immature element uh, immature element indicate of the malignant teratoma uh, the immature ele element usually you will found a uh, primitive epithelium a uh, primitive epithelium which is the epithelium very dark uh, hypochromatic epithelium that you not recognize what is actually uh, the epithelium this is a primitive tissue actually okay this is a, a the diagram this diagram just to show you the, the cells that, that you may have in the teratoma and this is the stratified squamous epithelium at the outside you can see this the keratin here and then you can see the hair this is the the follicle that form in a hair follicle here and this is the intestinal glands the adipose tissue the thyroid tissue there are many cells you can have in the teratoma because the teratoma is a tumor that that arising from at least the uh, at least two uh, 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 from the two uh, uh, dermal layer uh, the, whether okay, yeah. ectoderm, endoderm, or mesoderm. So you should know the which structure arising from the ectoderm, which structure arising from the mesoderm, which structure arising from the endoderm. So any structure it can give rise to the uh, 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 teratoma. Okay, any question? All right. So we move on to the uh, next uh, lesion. Uh, of course, uh, they show they give you like this. For example, if they just give you like this, uh, you should be ab able you should able to recognize that this is actually cystic lesion. All right. How uh, actually how to know that this is cystic lesion? There is nothing inside. It just a locules. It just the capsules with the multiple locules inside here. Of course, it's contain fluid, and the, the fluid when we cut, it already wash out, but it still have re remnant residual here, here inside here. Okay, but the rest of the fluid have been washed out. Okay, but we have only the capsule. So from the capsule here, we know that this is a multiple locules. That meaning multiple locules or multiloculated, meaning that the multiple cysts here. Okay, this is one cyst. This is one cyst. One cyst here. There's a multiple cysts of various sizes of cysts. All right, and then just mention that this is a multi multiloculated cysts of various varying sizes. And then, what else to describe? Huh? What, whatever you see here, it's just an internal capsule, so face, internal capsule, and the internal and external capsule. This is internal capsule. But you can see here, the internal capsule is smooth, right? It's just smooth. And sometimes you can see the prominent uh, vessels. You can mention the prominent vessel is seen within, within the internal capsules. Okay, and then it contains what? Maybe the residual here you can see it. You can you contain the clear fluid or raw uh, straw colored fluid, or sometimes you can see maybe you found this uh, mucoid material. The, okay, mucoid gelatinous material. You can mention like that. Okay, that's all to describe the cystic lesion of the worry, and then 
of course they will give you the microscopic features so depends the microscopic features is depend on the cells lining the mm, seeds okay you you should uh, uh, determine what type of cell that lining the seeds this is the cyst wall this is the cyst wall outside here is the cystic lumen just a lumen nothing this is a wall we take from the wall okay okay so what the lining what the cell lining the wall okay for example this is the cell that lining the uh, uh cyst wall this is the cell that lining of this cyst wall okay it's uh, two different type of cells these cells we call it serous cells huh? this is a uh, uh it is actually uh, ciliated columnar epithelium okay but here this is a, actually a columnar epithelium that contain of the mucinous how we know that it contain the mucinous you can see here uh, the, nu the, the nucleus become um basally located okay basally located the, but uh, the, the the epithelium is filled by something inside here which is mucin uh, it's full with mucin meaning that the cells is the mucin secreting cells the cell that producing mucin so the nucleus become basally located so this is when it is lined by the mucin secreting cells so it become a mucinous lesion huh? so as what you can see here the cells all single lining all single lining and the cells are all normal so meaning that this is a benign lesion when this is benign lesion we call it mucinous cyst adenoma okay over here this is a serous epithelium and there's no mucin producing yeah, you can see the nucleus um, uh, is centrally located no space like this no so this is a serous cells um, so it becomes serous cyst adenoma okay i hope everyone understand okay okay uh, just to uh uh to to make you uh able to differentiate between benign and malignant for example just now i've mentioned you about the benign lesion but what what happened when it is uh become malignant okay you can see it's still a white it's still a cystic lesion but in malignant of course there will be solid uh lesion solid growth prominent inside the cyst <clears throat> for example in this case this this is benign isn't it just now cirrhosis adenoma or mucinosis adenoma it's nothing inside only for the uh, fluid uh, there's no growth within the cyst but in malignant uh, that's why malignancy although from the uh, CT scan or ultrasound we, uh, the clinician can determine it is probably malignant when they found this structure and the solid structure we need the important thing here solid structure whenever they found a solid structure inside the cystic lesion for example like this there's a solid structure that forming a papillary growth within the uh, cystic lesion that there's in in most of condition the solid growth is prominent which is more than the cystic growth okay and and of course they can, we can suspect of the malignancy there okay you can see here there's a quite heterogeneous surface with some area blackish like hemorrhage here, and the cells look very friable friable means easily ruptured the cells a very soft gelatinous friable hemorrhage here and there okay and here the capsule here i'm not sure whether still bridge or not but of course from the what, what we can see here some adolescent going to outside of the uh, uh, the capsule meaning that the capsule is bridge which is uh, common in the malignancy all right of course uh, under uh, the um, photomicrograph will show a malignant lesion show malignant lesion this is a very plomophic cells very plomophic and hyperchromatic cells that arrange in papillary formation 
you can see here this is a fibrovascular core it's a forming like a papillae and some forming like a glandula and some forming like papillae when it is elongated okay of course this is a malignancy so with the presence of ma ma various metosis here 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 all the metosis all right so this is an example of the papillary serous uh, carcinoma of the ovary okay that's the malignant counterpart of the serous cyst adenoma just now all right it become papillary serous uh, carcinoma okay now we move on to the lesion that related to the pregnancy or placenta okay um this is very nice okay um underground pathology underground you can see you think that the female that lady is pregnant but when they are doing the ultrasound they found uh, that there is this type of lesion they occupy the endometrial cavity so it's not a pregnant real normal pregnancy eh? we call it the molar pregnancy okay we found a uh, from there is a bunch of vesicles develops from the placenta tissue eh? all right and then You cannot see there is no uh, fetus, no fetus inside the um, uterus, and the vesicles are varying in sizes that contain of clear fluid inside that. Okay, this is a, a typical vesicles. All right. There's no other structure, no malignant evidence of malignancy, no fetus is seen. All right. So, just a very simple description. As long as you mention, you did mention about the vesicles, a bundle of vesicles of varying sizes, the content of clear fluid inside the occupying the whole endometrial cavity. Okay. So under microscopy, uh, this is the features that you uh, you found under microscopy. Okay, this is actually the coronic villi. The coronic villi is the villus that forming out from the chorion. Okay, in a normal, there will be a normal. There will be a normal size of the villi without any um, uh, space or uh, system formation like this okay this villus is enlarged enlarged villus why enlarged because that they they are composed of this structure the a vascular structure huh? that we call it system inside the villus okay this is example this is example of the system formation and this villus is lined by these cells it's normally lined by the trophoblastic cells that come we have the two type of trophoblastic cells whether cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast okay these two type of cells will be normally line the the coronary villi okay this structure the system formation is actually that 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 forming the vesicles under uh, gross findings okay okay vesicles is actually the coronary villi okay and and um in cor in hydrotidiform mold, we have a partial and complete uh, mold depends on several uh, structures uh, features. For example, presence of the fetus or not, or uh, the size of the uh, 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 mold, the villa, the villas, whether all are enlarged or or just some a uh, normal size, some enlarged. Okay, or 
depends on the cells that lining the villus, whether it is a circumferential proliferate or just a focal proliferation. These three features uh, will give you whether it is a partial mole or a complete mole. All right. So uh, I think you need to understand, but do not uh, be very confused a lot. Just remember a few things that I did mention to you regarding the hydatidiform mole or um, uh, molar pregnancy. Okay. Uh, now we move on to the next organ, which is a uh, breast. Okay. This is a normal structure of the, the microscopic, uh, the histology structure of the breast lobules where you have the terminal duct here that's the surrounding by the multiple acinines so it's forming one lobules all right and if you see at the dark or lob acini the cells are lining by two double epithelium which is myoepithelium and the luminal cells or acini cells the ductal cells okay Depends dark or acini. If acini, acini cells. If it is lined the dark, it is ductal cells. But whatever, it must have the myoepithelial cells to indicate that that is a normal structure, normal dark or normal acini. Okay. So what the lesion that can arise from the um, breast? Uh, the most common are. This type of lesion we call it fibroadenoma. Okay, how the fibroadenoma looks like under the gross? Under the gross, the fibroadenoma looks like this. Yeah, it is a, it is a solid lesion, uh, which is sharply demarcated. Sharply demarcated meaning that is very well circumscribed and we can definitely differentiate the tumor from the surrounding tissue all right and then it is of the cut surface is solid uh, with uh, you can describe the color uh, it um it for me maybe not in this picture but under uh, uh sometimes it can show give you world like pattern because it's a compost of fibrous it's actually the main the similar concept with the uh, uh, fibroid or layumayuma just now only that the layumayuma is composed of the smooth muscles but in fibroadenoma is composed of fibrous cells both are spindle cells and both are mesenchymal cells eh? which is it's forming a solid, very solid structure. All right? Understand? Of course, in, in this type of lesion, there will be no necrosis. There will be no hemorrhage. All right? Okay? So the histology, uh, the histology, this is the typical uh, histology for the fibroid adenoma where you can see here, 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 this is actually uh, the dark, okay, the dark or oh, acini that now become some uh, slit like pattern like this, uh, some like um, rounded small like this, okay. These two features, you need at least remember their um, name, um, name of the pattern the growth pattern eh? the dark some of the dark is compressed by the fibrous tissue surrounding the fibrous tissue forming a slit like pattern compressed or slit like pattern like this where we call it intracanalicular pattern <clears throat> some of the dark or glands are forming around tubular like this we call it pericanalicular patterns. But what important here, the glands or duct now being separated each other by the proliferating stroma in between the glands. Okay? So, the stroma 
you can see here although although under this power it looks very loose or mixoid stroma it could look very whitish all right it's not that cellular if cellular it looks very bluish full of cells but here it looks whitish okay these are important features to describe the fibroadenoma fibroadenoma by definition it is a proliferation of the intralobular stroma intralobular stroma is the stroma cells in between these lobules this all right all this so by definition the fibroadenoma is the proliferation of the intralobular stroma and a glands so that's why the glands also proliferate but it's proliferating but it's separating each other by the proliferating stroma in between the glands all right i hope everyone understand okay boleh paham ke boleh doktor okay thank you so much kabilan all right now we move on to the uh, second uh, common uh, lesion in the breast called benign lesion we call it fibrocystic disease or fibrocystic change the same thing huh? it's actually it actually it is um it's not a really a tumor it's not a really tumor like a fibroadenoma just now okay it is only a um, what we call the spectrum of disease okay spectrum of the physiological changes that have been that undergone within your breast it become like this so it is more on spectrum of the changes of disease that's why we call it fibrocystic disease it's not um a neoplastic or neoplasm like adenoma or fibroadenoma or carcinoma okay that's why what we have is this kind of lesion that composed of the irregular uh, whitish lesion or fibrous lesion the white one the white is the fibrous okay it is firm with the presence of the cystic changes within the lesion uh, the cystic cystic and the cyst is contained of uh, like a brownish fluid inside there okay that's why we call it blue doom cyst all right in between it is a fibrous tissue which is irregular growth okay of the fibrous tissue fibrous uh, whitish uh, lesion the same thing here okay it's glistening because of the fibrous it's a firm looking uh, uh, lesion with in between it is a cystic lesion that composed that contain of the uh, bluish uh, fluid all right so um whenever you found this structure it is a uh, indicating of the fibrocystic disease or fibrocystic change of the breast normally a patient complain of mass but it is just a lumpy mass not a well discrete mass like in fibroadenoma all right so under a microscopy the morphology uh, showing the this structure huh? you try to find at least two out of four structures huh? whether of course there will be fibrosis that's a mass structure you have the fibrosis here you can see in between that is the collagen so meaning that there's a lot of metro uh, fibrosis huh? and then you can see here the cystically dilated glands we call it cystically dilated dark actually so it, this is a uh, abnormal due to the dilatation of the dark within the breast and then what happened uh, the cells within the dark will be secrete the fluid the secretion so there will be secretion inside there and the secretion <coughs> the secretion later on will become clock uh, become obstruct obstruction of the dark that that induce the inflammation surrounding the dark that causing more and more fibrosis all right 
And then sometimes the cysts are aligned by these prominent cells. We call it apocrine metaplasia of the cells. All right. And then what, what else? Sometimes you may have a lot of the acini here, so indicate of the adenosis, the increase in the number of the acini. All that four structures indicating of the fibrocystic change. So we can see here there's a dilated duct, cystically dilated duct, presence of many uh, increase in the number of the uh, acini here, we call it adenosis. There's increase in the collagen in between there, we call it fibrosis. And sometimes you may have the you may have the structure, uh, the dark line by the hyperplastic structure, epithelial hyperplasia, and the C is sometimes lined by the this cell, which is uh, the cell with abundant uh, um, cytoplasm, granula, eosinophilic cytoplasm. You can see it is a pinkish uh, as compared to another cells. So this is an apocrine metaplasia. So try to find all these, not all, maybe two or two out of four out of five. You can so you can diagnose a uh, um, fibrocystic change. Just to highlight, but it should be pinkish, but in this image it looks bluish, alright? But this is how uh, the apocrine metaplasia, metaplasia metaplasia cells looks like. Eh? That lining the apocrine uh, seas, that lining the seas. We call it apocrine seas. All right, and then another thing you not uh, maybe need to know another thing other than the, the rest, which is the tumor that the fast growing tumor, which is typically a very large. Eh? It is very large because it is fast growing. If it is late in in presentation or late diagnose, it become um, growing uh, very fast and become big and big okay so um this is a typical uh gross uh, features of the uh, phallodis tumor you can see here it's very big with a nodular lesion and and uh, under microscopy is actually under cut section of the lesion you can see it's actually the well circumscribed lesion but it's pushing everywhere because it's growing very fast so it's pushing the capsule and wanted to go to everywhere but it's still well circumscribed all right uh, under um for the histology um you can see there's many clefting here and there very clefting here and there and the reason of this clefting because the the stroma is overgrowth eh? the stroma here the intralabular stroma here is overgrowth double or triple compared to the fibroadenoma all right so this double growth going uh, show uh, but the resulting in the clefting formation looks like a leaf like formation like this that's why uh, their name is a phyllodes tumor. The phyllodes uh, means the leaf-like uh, formation. All right. So what important in phyllodes tumor? It become um, it can uh, transform uh, become malignant. Okay. It become malignant phyllodes tumor and it become very uh, fast growing and very high uh, recurrency rate. All right. Okay, and in sometimes in um breast, you you may found uh, something that the the very gelatinous structure like this that's indicate of the special type of cancer here we call it mucinous carcinoma of the breast. When the microscopy you found the nest of the cells, the cluster of the cells that embed within the pool of the mucin like this, there is no other. Uh, diagnosis in the world except for the mucinous carcinoma all right this <coughs> and this is a typical structure to show you how the carcinoma of the breast looks like okay it is a lesion with a um, with a you can see this is a lesion, whitish lesion. Look at the border, it's still uh, fairly circumscribed, but at some areas, it looks infiltrating into the stroma. Okay? 
the tumor is a firm solid with irregular infiltrative border and in some areas it poorly circumscribed this is a fatty tissue which is the uh, the normal uh, breast parenchyma all right okay so microscopy it depends if they give this this indicator of the uh, uh this is actually uh, uh they want to tell to show you how actually the the fibroblasts react toward the malignant cells you can see the malignant cell become irregular like this and the fibroblasts become proliferate forming we call it desmoplastic stromeration and the cell the invasive carcinoma the carcinoma why we call it carcinoma because the cells that we found here is a malignant cells that still forming a glands but it's not a form not normal glands anymore this is a malignant glands with the loss of the myoepithelial cells we cannot see here but it is evident by the negative in the malignant and myoepithelial cells but what we can see here the cells are infiltrating everywhere within the stroma whenever the cells are infiltrating it is invasive carcinoma and the cells here are plomophyte and uh, hypochromatic eh? if uh, uh, maybe and uh, if it, under higher power you can see the mitosis abundant here okay you can see the stroma here is a very dysmoplastic there's no definite arrangement like a normal duct just now normal duct that's surrounded with the central duct with the surrounding asini very nice lobulocentric architecture but there is no more uh, the architecture anymore it become hair haywire the cells are infiltrating everywhere so i think i hope everyone should be able to describe uh, should be able to describe the the invasive carcinoma of the breast so the diagnosis will be the invasive carcinoma no special type why no special type because it is not lobular which is the you you may find a single file like indian file it is not mucinous it is not a tubular it's not a special type so we call it no special type which is the most common invasive carcinoma of the breast okay understand okay so i just want to tell you what the special type means okay but this is not your level the special type means when 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 we we can identify the type of the tumor for example in this case what we found is all the tumor forming this formation this structure which is all the tumor all over the area forming a tubular structure like this and this structure it looks like a benign it looks like a normal duct but actually it is infiltrating everywhere and it is loss of my epithelial cells so this is example of the tubular carcinoma one of the uh, special type of the breast cancer that carries a very good prognosis all right that's uh very important for us to identify the typing of the cancer um one of it because uh, it carry different pr prognosis this the the um special type we give you uh, a good prognosis we could the uh, response to the treatment and everything okay and uh, this uh, um uh, tumor of the breast this is a fatty tissue the whitish fatty the whitish the yellowish fatty tissue here and and you can see here there's a tumor here but this tumor is very uh, small but the age it looks very uh, infiltrating here okay infiltrating this may be uh, mm, we not uh, not sure whether it is palpable or not maybe with this size maybe not palpable okay <clears throat> but but unfortunately we found it is a tumor it is not palpable meaning maybe because there is less the uh, fibroblast uh, less uh there's more plastic reaction yeah, no uh, proliferation of, of the problem fibroblast that that causing the tumor become palpable and become very hard on palpation right but in the tumor that lies of the desmoplastic stroma reaction it become very difficult to palpate okay for example in infiltrating lobular carcinoma but under uh, the tumor this 
we section from the tumor just now from here from here we section we put under microscope what we see is this kind of cells the cells not forming a glandular not forming a dark not forming any acini but the cells are in single filing infiltrating the stroma and you can see there is a collagen in between the cells and the cells are queuing each other the cells are hypochromatic uh, blue dark blue in color high NC ratio okay these are Another example of the special type of cancer in the breast, we call it invasive lobular carcinoma. Okay. I think with that, uh, that's all for the practical, but now I would like to go through the, the answer, your answer in a... Okay. Now we go to the quiz uh, of uh, practical uh, handout that I have given to everyone at least to do something. All right. Anyone wanted to share your answer? Okay, so far, boleh faham ke? Siapa? Ketua kelas siapa? Ismail eh? Ada nama Ismail ke? Hi, hello everyone. Hello, Doctor. Uh, we can hear you, Doctor. Okay. Okay, let's look at the chat. Anyone chat with me? No, eh? Okay. Um, so, faham ke semua? Participant ada berapa? 104. Alright, that's Aham, good. Okay. okay. Alright, now, uh, ada cuba buat ke? Soalan ni, quiz ni. Yes, doctor. Okay, saya just bagi quiz like this. I don't know how to do quiz in the system, in, in the e-learning. And I don't know how to do the kahoot during the lecture. Uh, very difficult to learn many things nowadays. I just go like a usual. I hope everyone fun. Although I'm not giving you interesting uh, kahoot or whatever, right? Because so many things I need to give uh, to teach you. I have no no time to give to teach you in a fun ways <laughs> like others do. Uh, what important you get the, the the basic concept of pathology the disease, which is very important. You need to use this to apply this the whole uh, in your life during uh, your service, uh, your work later on. Okay, this is very important um, because you are dealing with human. Uh, you need to give the correct diagnosis. You need to have a very good gut feeling for every disease that comes to you. You need to have, a, you need to able to correlate whatever presentation or a history that given to you by patient. You need to have something inside your mind, the idea, and you need to exclude the rule out many disease before you come to the conclusion to the diagnosis and give the treatment to the patient. All right. This is very important. I have no time to make it fun <laughs> like many others. Right. Now we start our quiz the, on the pathology. Okay, remember that you always gain something by reading. I hope I've given uh, you many mater uh, material, lecture, notes, the video recording, the additional note, the practical. Okay, the GSL and the handout, huh? you should by now understand and able at least to answer uh, this uh, simple quiz, all right? So, of course, I did show you this uh, structure in the, at the beginning of my practical uh, session just now. So, this is a normal surface huh? with a normal OS opening here, okay? This normal OS is a very... Uh, what we call it, um, very impressive eh, with what God have done eh, with this small OS, eh, but nearly near the delivery, uh, during the delivery time, this OS become open, open, opening like a 10 centimeter like that, okay? And there's a head, the human head coming out from this OS, okay? 
very fantastic. Okay. And this is normal oils whereby you have the, the, the surroundings are very glistening and very smooth. Okay. It's no pathology. Okay. And then um, for this image, okay, they ask you what is the A, B, and C. Yeah. This actually want you to uh, differentiate the normal surveys. This is a squamous epithelia. A indicator of normal squamous epithelia, where you can see here, this is the normal uh, cells, the mature cells, okay? The mature squamous cells. Uh, mature squamous cells, the, the cells are uh, tido like this, okay? It's mature with the vacuoles, but the small, dia punya, ni, uh, nucleus. All right. You can still see here there's a normal. Uh, okay. Maybe uh, I don't want to make you confused. Sometimes you may have the coilocytes like this with the gray xenoid uh, nucleus of the cells. Eh? That one, we call it SYN1 or SYN2, SYN1 usually. But the rest are all normal. Okay, but you may have the resinoid uh, slight cells, which is coilocytes. The coilocytes is the, cerv the cervical epithelium. Uh, it is the squamous epithelium cell that have been infected by the HPV virus. When it is infected by HPV virus, the cells become... Uh, changes it, we call it cytopathic effect of the cells, it becomes coilocytes. Okay, this is indicating of the uh, and at the beginning of the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Okay, maybe the low grade, okay, which is seen one when, when you found the coilocytes. But here, this is under low power, so we consider that this is a normal. But here, this is abnormal, okay? <clears throat> this is the junction between the normal and the abnormal. The abnormal, we call it dysplastic epithelium. Eh? When this dysplastic epithelium involving the whole thickness of the epithelium, we call it SYN3. Cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, 3, stage 3. Eh? It's indicating of the whole, the full thickness of the epithelium. Why we call it dysplastic? Huh? We call it dysplastic when the cells, you can see, are larger in the size, in terms of the size, darker in terms of the color, very bluish, and then the cells are disorderly arranged as compared to the normal cells, are orderly arranged, all right? But here are disorderly arranged. You can see there is a lot of metosis here, 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 here. And the cells are disorderly arranged. However, the cells still confine to the epithelium. There's no invasion. Uh, with, uh, there's no invasion into the subepithelial stroma. Uh, when there is an invasion here, so we call it invasive carcinoma. Now it becomes the squamous cell carcinoma. All right, understand? Uh, excuse me, uh, doctor. Yes. Ah, doctor, in my handout, this answer for mm. the B part, I didn't mention mm. the junction between normal epithelium, but mm. I just mentioned as, uh, how to say, this, a superficial dysplastic process. Why mm. for C, I mentioned as full thickness dysplastic process. Is mm. it acceptable, doctor, or do we need to mention that uh, the normal epithelium also present in the B part? Um. What what interesting here, I think the concept is wrong when you say there is a superficial uh, process. You know, from scene 1 to scene 3, it must start from the lower part. Scene 1, when there is involving the basal epithelium only. Scene 2, when there is involving the basal epithelium up to the middle part of the epithelium. Scene 3, when there is uh, involving the whole thickness from the basal to the super superficial part. Alright? It's not from the superficial towards the uh, deeper part. The process is from the lower part towards the superficial part. Understand? 
Okay, doctor. So, now I get it. Yeah. So whatever you want to write here, there's no problem. But I just want to tell you here, this is the junction between the normal and abnormal. Oh, right? sure. Doctor. Because yeah, until, I, think, I, I thought that it is from superficial and it invades towards the basal area. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So okay, please thanks a lot, doctor. Correct, yeah, please correct the concept there. Sure, doctor. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, this. Sorry, doctor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, regarding regarding the question, eh, it says mm -hmm. that uh, uh, describe the change, epithelium change, isn't it? Uh -huh. So if we just simply say from moderate to severe or from from mild to moderate or mild to severe, in this case, is it acceptable, eh, doctor? We not um get or oh, actually we didn't get the uh, the the whole thing uh from from you when when you say it just a mild to severe uh but actually we want you we want to assess your understanding you can write whatever here as long well as that indicate your understanding uh okay. okay you no problem you if you want to tell that this is the process uh, mm -hmm. i forgot the question how actually i, I asked you uh, uh, describe the process eh? the 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 changes the 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 describe, changes describe process the changes in b and c area uh b and c okay uh, b and c. so b and c is already the abnormal okay uh -huh. abnormal uh, abnormal area mm -hmm. except for the a which is a normal okay yes. mm -hmm. so uh, I mainly uh, actually I asked you to describe the changes in B and C. Is actually yeah maybe the question is quite blur. Actually, I want to you to describe the cells that occupy here. Uh, okay, actually yeah I want you to describe the dysplastic cells. <laughs> Okay, must be yeah. uh, if possible as detailed as possible describing all the changes of the nucleus. Yeah, as long as you understand. Yeah, yeah, that's what I I want actually the okay. the changes of the cells as compared to the normal cells here. All right. Okay. So it's, yeah, yeah, the the dysplastic cell. How you recognize dysplastic cell? Why you call it dysplastic cell? The cell become transformation now from the normal to 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 dysplastic cell because. It, now the cell become increase in the size, like become larger, become darker, become hypochromatic. The cell disorderly growth uh, pattern from the basal part to the superficial part, uh, something, something like that. All right. Okay. okay, okay. Doesn't matter. As, that. Yeah. Doesn't matter as long as you understand uh, that this is normal, this is abnormal, and this is actually syn three. All right. Cervical okay. intraepithelial neoplasm. Neoplasia 3, right? Yes, sir. Thank you okay. so much. Sir. Okay, welcome. And now this uh, group, this, this photo micrograph, uh, micrograph, and um, this photograph is quite uh, uh, common. Common. They want you to describe the organ and the tumor. Of course, although it's not mentioned what the organ, you know that you're supposed to know that this is the surface with the os here, and then this is the squamous epithelium that covering the 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 ectosurface. All right, and and there is a tumor. And there is a tumor from the survey showing the esophytic growth and esophytic and ulcerative growth. I did mention it looks like also here. Yeah, the tumor surface is uh, ulcerated and the margin is well defined and, uh, but irregular okay so the diagnosis based on the gross you can uh, put it in your mind which is probably this is a vital carcinoma but we don't know whether the squamous cell carcinoma or endosophical carcinoma until proven by the hpe so hpe given to you like this eh? given to you like this so now you can commit in your mind that this is squamous cell carcinoma why because you can see this is a this structure this structure is a keratin pearl and the keratin pearl what indicating of keratin pearl in the keratin pearl indicate of abnormal squamous uh, formation whereby they they are forming a concentrate layer uh, of the keratin that's why we call it keratin pearls it's indicate of the well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma and then you can describe the, the squamous cells how it looks like and then the diagnosis will be squamous cell carcinoma okay and then sometimes they give you 
like this. So you can just describe. This is describe the tumor is a fatigue growth. Uh, the tumor shows the hemorrhage and ulcerated, ulcerated, ulcerated surface, irregular margin, extending into the vagina. Okay. So if this tumor located within the endometrium, let's say it is located here. So you should bear in your mind, you should think of the endometrial carcinoma instead of the cervical carcinoma. And then they give you the microscopy. Huh? So this is actually, I just want to test you, this is actually the normal histology of the endometrium. Now this is the normal endometrial glands, which is well-spaced gland between each other within the stroma. This is stroma and all the glands are well spaced each other. All right. But this is a malignant tumor. Okay. So uh, what do you think of the histology as compared to previous histology? This is more crowding back to back a pattern of the glands, very irregular crowded glands lined by this plastic epithelium where the cells are very hypochromatic, very Plomorphic with increase in the number of the mitosis, high in C ratio. So, this is an endometrial carcinoma. All right. Okay. And then, these two uh, gross features I have mentioned you just now in practical class, you can just describe freely without any stress, without any <laughs> stress. Just describe whatever you see. This is a multiple nodules within the uterine wall that causing enlargement of the uterus. The nodules are well circumscribed and solid. And you can see the cut surface. They cut, this is cut surface. They cut this nodule, become, it, beca it becomes two. Okay? The cut surface of the uh, nodule is homogeneous. And some nodules going into the endometrial cavity. There's some nodules growing outside like this. All right. And then if they give you this uh, gross features, can just describe but this is looks like a single nodule or maybe another nodule here but this nodule arising from the my myometrium at the fundus area and the nodule growing uh, towards the endometrial cavity the nodule are very firm and solid nodule all right very simple and this is the microscopy features from that nodule it is actually a composed of spindle cells this spindle cells arrange in interlacing fascicles these fascicles, some sweeping like this, some like uh, like this, but whatever is interlacing each other. Okay, um, and then there is no mitosis. Okay, so it is layoma yoma. All right. So what do you think of this condition? Huh? This condition, you can see the pathology is at the fallopian tube. Huh? So just elaborate what you see. Huh? This is, uh, this is the rupture at topic tuber pregnancy. And why? Give the reason. You can see there is a mass forming a sac uh, here, a sac that occurs within the fallopian tube. It is then rupture with the blood coming out from the mass. You can see the within the sac, there is a fetus light, all right? Like a fetus within the sac. So this is a rupture at topic, um, at topic tuber pregnancy. All right, so I got another question, but let me finish first, all right? Because I have no problem if you want to ask, asking, uh, interrupt me, but uh, please say it out, say it out, eh? not not writing. Okay. Um. For example, in um, uh, this is a um, uh. I missed to um, mention here, this is ovary. I just added here, this is ovary, okay? Um, of course, the first word you need to mention that this is a cystic lesion. This is a cystic lesion. And this is whether single or unilocalated or multilocalated. And the cysts here are multilocalated. You can see there's one cyst here. This is one cyst here already ruptured. This is another cyst here. So this is a multilocalated cyst. In fact, in this cyst, it still got something inside the cyst, which is straw-colored fluid. All right? Okay. And then what else to describe? This, the capsules. You can see this is the external capsules. This is the internal capsules, which is, which is the capsules are very smooth and glistening. 
All right, that's all. So in your mind, you should you should think of the whether serous is adenoma, and try to confirm it with the microscopy whether it is the cells lined by the serous or mucinous. All right, and then. <coughs> And then um, they, sometimes there's a cystic lesion, but composed of the something solid nodules inside the cystic lesion. For example, in this case, it's a forming of solid nodules that the, some, it looks velvety like a papillae formation that coming out from the uh, solid lesion. Okay. So in some areas, it looks hemorrhagic, very fresh hemorrhage like here. Okay. And the external capsule still looks uh, normal. Um, and then... This is internal capsule whereby we have the, the something outpouching from the internal capsule here. So this is but in your mind maybe this is a not more uh, this is not only the adenoma uh, serous adenoma or maybe since it has a solid uh, nodules here, it may be more than that. Maybe the uh, carcinoma which is a serous papillary carcinoma. And uh, this is just to show you how we determine benign malignant lesion of the ovarian cysts, okay? And uh, this is a very famous one, the tumor, the ovary, uh, which is the cystic lesion that con contain of cheesy keratin material like this, with a tooth or hairs, a tough of hair like this, okay? And sometimes you may see the, two, the, the bony structure, okay? So back in your mind, maybe this is a mature cystic teratoma. So just please co correlate well with the uh, microscopy features. So next, <clears throat> what is the organ? Whenever you found this, uh, a lot of SC9 here in, in forming uh, lobules or SC9 like this, like a great formation like this. So this is a actually normal lobule of the breast. So the organ is the breast. So what does it mean with normal lobules? Normal lobules mean the RC9, uh, the, this normal lobule means that, that multiple RC9, the surrounding the terminal duct, maybe you cannot see the terminal duct here because of the cutting. And the RC9 duct located in the normal lobulo centri architecture. So this is a normal lobule. So what does it mean with the normal RC9? Normal RC9, whenever you have the RC9 or gland-like structure like this, with the presence of the epithelial cells together with the myo epithelial cells. <clears throat> so this is the normal RC9. Okay, so what is this? This is, so what the structure inside here? The structure inside here is actually the necrosis. Eh? This is the duct cells that undergo the malignancy. We call it ductal carcinoma in situ with the presence of the central necrosis. We call it comedo necrosis. So this is the diagnosis with is ductal carcinoma in situ. Okay, what is the structure? This is a myto mitosis, the tripolar type of mitosis. Okay. Um, this is a microscopy features of this lesion that coming out from the breast. Okay, what should probably the diagnosis? You can see here this this tumor, this lesion arising within the duct. This is the space of the duct. Okay, this is the duct space with the duct become dilated, and there's a tumor inside this the ductal space. Okay, so the tumor. Uh, within the duct, so we call it intraductal punya tumor. Okay, intraductal tumor. The tumor forming what? It's a forming a papillae structure with a fibrovascular core. This is a fibrous uh, punya, um, this is a fibrous tissue that forming a core like with the, with the papillae structure, with the epithelium that forming like papillae structure with a fibrovascular core. So this is a papilloma. So we call it, this is intraductal papilloma of the breast. Okay. What is the name of this condition? This is illustrated to you. This is the skin or epidermis. And then <clears throat> uh, written here, the intraductal carcinoma, the ductal carcinoma in situ just now, that the cells are traveling uh, uh, through the duct and going and, and reside here at the epidermis. That is skin here. So what is the condition? We call it. This is the condition we call Paget disease of the breast. All right, Paget disease of the breast, whereby 
uh, when the malignant cells uh, travel through the dark, uh, going into the um, uh, dark, the what we call lactiferous dark, and then going to the skin here, okay? Skin at the nipple. So we call it Paget disease of the breast, okay? So this is the skin, the epidem the squamous epithelium, the normal epidermis, and then what happened? We found the these cells in between the epidermis. So what type? What are the name of these cells? These are the Paget cells. The diagnosis is the Paget disease of the breast. Okay, you can see this is a malignant cell which is different from the normal cells. The cells are showing the large nuclei with abundant vesicular nuclei and some showing the mitosis. Right? This is Paget cells and this is Paget disease of the breast. Okay, and then this is a common uh, microscopic features of the uh, breast from the uh, breast. So I want you to compare with the normal punya dark cells as compared to these cells. Now the cells, you look at here the cells, the malignant cells are actually infiltrating everywhere and some are still forming a glands. I'm forming a glandular structure with a lumen inside here. This is a glandular structure. Glandular structure, a glandular structure. But the cells are plomophyte, hyperchromatic, and increase in the number of mitosis. And there is a presence of desmoplastic remoration within the tumor. So this is the invasive carcinoma of no special type. How about this? And this is the tumor malignant infiltrating cells that they arrange in single filing, infiltrating into the stroma. There is no glandular formation here. So this is invasive lobular carcinoma. So that's all from me. What do you think? Can you get it? Of course, sebab dah banyak kali repeating, repeating, I just go it um, laju-laju lah. Huh? Penat juga, but I know that you need to repeat. <laughs> All of you at your level, you need, we need to repeat and repeat and repeat so that you can absorb and understand. I know that. Because I'm at your stage, I'm at your level before, before I'm, I'm uh, become a pathologist like now. Okay, so all of you, yeah, I know we should repeat and repeat. Uh, some, I hope uh, all of you uh, can at least understand and can apply all this um, maybe uh, for your exam first uh, before you apply in your work letter. All right. So anything? Okay. Um, any question? Okay. Um, recorder, stop sharing.